Hey everyone, Shashank this side. I hope everybody is doing well and safe at home. So starting today onwards, I'm creating a playlist where we'll be going to learn a quick demo, how you can play around with the configuration, how you can quickly troubleshoot the scenarios within the cloud system, starting with AWS, moving to Azure and GCP, whatever the cloud that we'll be going to present in my channel. But uh, this playlist is mostly towards a quick cloud lab. You can say a hack into the cloud system to troubleshoot, to configure anything in a real quick scenario. And I'll be going to take all my production based scenarios where I have faced issues or I have done the configuration in a real quick way. So first video of this playlist is how you can recover a lost key pair. So the scenario over here is and which I have faced with one of my client where they created different instances and they said, Hey, I, I forgot the key where it is stored. So can you please help me to restore it? So the idea behind this is how you can recover a lost key. So I have created two instances. These are two Amazon Linux instances. And as you can see, one is tagged as recover key instance and the second one is tagged as lost key. So I don't have a key for this instance and I want to recover and try to log into this particular instance because I don't have any custom ID created on this system. It is using the default EC2 user. So I have to log in into this system, see what is happening in this particular system, what all applications have been installed because I need an SSH session. So what all steps we have to do? So in order to recover a key in such scenarios, what you have to do first, stop the instance, the where you don't have a key, detach the root volume, attach that root volume as a secondary volume into the recovery instance where you have the key and copy over the authorized key to the volume which we have attached as secondary and detach from the recover key instance and attach it back to the loss key instance as a root volume. So this is the funder that we'll be going to follow and let's initiate, right? So first step is to stop an instance. I know most of you are aware of this scenario, most of you not. So I thought let's give a quick start to this particular production based scenario, right? Okay, perfect. Stopping. Meanwhile, let me connect to this instance. Copy, uh, no, the SSH. I already have two sessions open. Why? I'll let you know shortly. Perfect. So I'm logging to the instance, which I already have a key. As you can see, I'm already logged into an instance. Now, if I show you LSBLK, the file system basically I have only one root volume right okay let's go back to our instances this is already stopped let's go to the storage click on the volume select the volume and actions detach we'll wait for this volume to get detached from the system it will be fairly quick yep as you can see available now let's select the volume again click actions and attach. We'll be going to attach this volume to our running instance. You can have the file system as dev SDF. Click attach. Perfect. So volume is attached. Don't worry about this one. This is the previous instance. Okay. Now if I do lsblkf, as you can see, I have two volume. One is xvda1, which is the root. One other one is xvtf1, which is the one which I have added as a secondary volume. Okay. Now, uh, first, as you can see, there is no mount point because we'll be going to copy from some keys from this instance, this particular volume to this particular volume, right? The secondary volume. So let's create a mount point. And also I'll be going to share the commands. So I already have commands. So let me actually copy real quick way. So first we'll be going to create a directory as a temp volume uh, file already exist. Okay. So let's say temp volume one. Fine. We have the volume created. 
next one we'll be going to mount this volume with our file system the new volume or the new directory is temp volume one okay now if we do lsplk as you can see the volume has been mounted over here now the next part we'll be going to copy the authorized key from the existing server from this volume to this volume so for that we can use the copy command okay copy paste so what this is doing it's copying the authorized key from the existing ssh folder and giving that key to the newly created mounted volume which is temp volume 1 directory home ec2 user in the same location right then only it will work that's the logic right okay so this has been created now if you try to see the content of that particular folder uh, okay sorry it's temp volume 1 As you can see, we have the authorized key, 15th March. The date is in GMT, I believe. Okay, the next one, let's unmount this volume. So for that, sudo umount, then mount folder, temp volume one. Okay, now if you do lsplk, you will not see the mounted volume. So the authorized key, which is having the key pair value, it's already present in the secondary volume. The next step is to detach this volume and attach to the lost key instance. So let's go back to our EC2. So first of all, we have to see which one is the current volume that we need to work. Lost key instance. As you can see, this is dev SDF, right? So let's detach this volume. In use we'll wait for it to detach okay now it's available select now let's click attach and attach to the stopped instance and this has to be either SDA 1 or XVDF sorry XVDA which is the root by default uh, the device number for the root volume you can say attach perfect let's refresh it's in use let's go back to our stopped instance which is this one and you can see this is already attached over here and click start we'll wait for a few seconds and try to ssh into the system and see whether we are able to log in or not it will hardly take few seconds to come up in the running state so this is the way that you can recover the existing key now as per best of my knowledge and correct me if i am wrong just place out a comment in comment section if i am wrong this mechanism works from flavor to flavor like if it is amazon linux it will only work with amazon linux if it is centos then it is it it will work with the centos the another one machine as a centos or rhel family to rhel family I have never tested that out and I guess that will be going to fail from if you are trying to recover a key from Amazon Linux to RHEL family. So that might not work. Okay. Now it's in running state. Let's connect the instance. Let's go back on a new terminal. Let's SSH. Yes, I want to connect. And here we go now we are connected on the instance which we attach the volume having the key pair the value of the authorized key so in this way you will be able to quickly recover the lost key of your system and then you can play around with your application and whatever you have installed on the system so i hope this clears a lot in terms of the use case and how to configure how to troubleshoot the scenario so play around with this particular configuration because this is very helpful in 
your production based scenarios and I have seen a lot of clients doing that way when I used to do a migration and ask for a key they say hey we don't have a key we somebody did that for us and uh, we don't have a key in the storage area so please help us to recover and all those scenarios will be going to come into picture when you go into the production world and try to play around with these kind of scenarios so place out a comment in comment section if you have any issues any doubt i'll be there to help you have a nice day bye bye